All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, historically, Nigeria's political system has been dominated by men, even though women constitute a larger part of the voting population, with 6.2 million out of 12.2 million newly registered voters ahead of the 2023 general election and almost 50% of the nation's overall population. Nevertheless, there is growing recognition of the untapped capacity and talents of women and women's leadership. Over the last two decades, the rate of women's representation in national parliaments globally has incrementally increased from 11.8% in 1998 to 17.8% in 2008 to 23.5% in 2018. Now, some regions have seen particularly dramatic increases, such as um, the sub-Saharan Africa. Now, the real question is, can women you know, um, change how politics is played in Nigeria, given that, I mean, these numbers are doing well globally. Now, please hear, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to rate one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wisho Afco on the hashtag Wish Show. So, ladies, I want to quickly just hear your thoughts in a minute, and I want to bring in our guest. What do you think? Is it possible for us to change the face of politics in Nigeria? Yes, I, I do think so. Um, if we... If more women, you know, educated, not educated, really, if we're able to cross the barriers, you know, limiting women into going into leadership positions, I mean, all the barriers, cultural, religious, whatever, you know, if we're able to scale through that, I think that women will play a pivotal role because um, we, we, we are able to think differently, you know, and when we bring that to bear in issues concerning women, children, I think that would play an important role. Yeah, yeah. Are we not going to kick out the men? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Be all right. <laughs> Let me have thoughts. I was also going to say the same thing, but then I think there's also a growing recognition of the untapped capacity mm. of women in leadership positions as yeah. well. And I mean, I came across a UN um, um, article that said, uh, you know, one of the SDGs is to gender equality, yeah, right? But then absolutely. it said, if we continue at the rate that we are, it's take another 130 years mm. before we actually achieve that equality. But having said that, I think that women would actually play a very, very pivotal role in, you know, revising and reforming policies. We know, we know naturally, we know how women can be, right? So, yeah, I think women actually have the power to change the face Honestly, of politics. Because policies, right, if you look at policies, the way it works, there is no humanness yes. to some of the kind of policies that Absolutely. you Absolutely. And imagine if a woman was in charge of the policies, what then happens? It's mm. going to be different. Oh, no, man, let me quickly hear your thoughts on this. No, are you there? I totally agree with... Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, and yes, I, I totally agree with the, the conversation about women. It, it's unfortunate that still a, a lot of women are yet to realize the capacity that they can wield if they have an understanding of the power that they carry. As women, imagine that women come in and create policies that affect families, that affect society, that affect children, you know, in the education, in in healthcare, in agriculture, things will be seen from the human angle as well. And there will be a sort of a balance in perspectives and how um, issues are viewed, not just from one person's perspective, but from a holistic point of view. Mm. And that is the the power that women bring to the table when they show up in situations. And um, we're hoping that the more awareness is created, the more women can see the great work that some women, a lot of women who have already taken on this, taken the plunge, are making in the society where they are, then they can see that it's possible and support even those who are making, who are trying to push the boundaries already. I can, we, we would really experience tremendous change in the way things are run Absolutely. in our societies. Absolutely. Let me bring in our guest now. Abbasade George Ogan is a tri-sector leader with almost 20 years experience working across non-profit, 
private and public sector as a development professional. She chairs the gender subcommittee of the cross-cutting technical working group of the Nigerian National Development Plan for 2021 to 2050, um, I think. Now, the team. Now, she has a degree in political science and public administration from the University of Igminadion and an MSc in communication for innovation and development from Reading University and a master's in public administration MPA from the Harvard Kennedy School. She is the founder uh, Women in Leadership Advancement Network, that is Willen, and also the creator and the host of the Leading Woman Show. Let me add that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Abosade. And she's joined us live in studio, looking amazing as always. Thank you so much, Bosse, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. I, I see you. You were just smiling and nodding, especially when Chinelo was talking like, hey, hit it hard, hit it hard. You know, like this conversation is something that, you know, you live, you eat, you breathe it, you know, because you believe so much in the power that women can wield, you know, especially in positions of governance and leadership, Absolutely. right? Um, it was important that we brought this conversation especially because now we're in the political season a lot of things is happening yes we missed the we've missed the opportunity right but we can actually plan for the next four years Absolutely. and you know um sometimes when we see women going into politics the first thing is people are asking questions that normally they will not ask men mm. right so i mean not for i'm, I'm, not, I'm not completely forgetting and completely ignoring their capacity as women to be able to do things in a way that it would be much deeper mm. with serious thought process put into that thing compared to the men, right? And we don't even look at those strengths and see that, you know what, women can actually make a difference, right? So, I mean, when we brought up this topic, I said there's no other guest that can discuss <laughs> this other than Abbasid. But do you believe that really women can change how politics is played? So, I mean... And, and I just would commend everything that everybody said. I think we've laid the foundation in terms of there is no question. Um, but let me talk a little bit about evidence, right? I think that this is such a sensitive um, topic, especially in Nigeria where we are, which is very patriarchal, um, rooted in culture, tradition, and religion. Mm. So I think it's always important to address this conversation from a from the perspective of facts and evidence, right? Um, so one of the things that we saw recently is the Corruption Perception Index that's mm. usually published by Transparency International was published. Nigeria was ranked 150-something out of a total of 180 countries, similar to um, our ranking in terms of the number of women in parliament, right? We're somewhere around 4.1%. And I always say we're competing, unfortunately, with like war-torn countries. It's really embarrassing. But, you know, the Corruption Perception Index shows you that there is a direct correlation between having women in positions of leadership and the level of corruption, corruption. in a country. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I use that particular... Um, you know, um, statistic. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you ask any typical Nigerian, mm -hmm. what do you want to be <laughs> solved? Corruption. They corruption. Would say corruption. Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, here you go. Here's the evidence, right? Having more women in positions of power actually could reduce the level of corruption in the country, like direct correlation. Mm. So this is like evidence. In addition to that, what you were saying about human-centric policies is something that the evidence also shows sure. us that is a benefit of having women in political leadership positions. So a case study that was done in India where they had women political leaders, it showed that there was a direct increase in, pol in the levels of education and access to healthcare. Again, basic things that if you ask any typical Nigerian, they will say it's the reason why they are jackpine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but here's a solution for you. And I think the final thing that I would like to use is security. Mm -hmm. Women have been known to play a role of peace and diplomacy True. when it comes to issues of extreme violence and things like that. They don't, it's not typical for women to show force. Mm. as a response to force. Mm. It's often that women use a peaceful route 
and use diplomacy. So again, if you ask the typical Nigerian, what are some of the issues we have? Insecurity will be top on the agenda. So these are all evidence levels. And like you said, it's not that men and w women are better leaders than men. True. It's that women lead differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's really important. Yeah. Mm. And so what is happening in a country like Nigeria is that we're depriving ourselves of the, of the, capacity, potential, the potential to have women Hi. leadership. Mm. It's not something that whether you're male, female, child, we should all be pushing against it. And we should all be working against the barriers mm -hmm. because there are genuine barriers. Yeah. But I don't want us to dwell on the barriers. I think what you've said is really important. How do we set ourselves up for success over the next four, four years, years so that we don't come back and we're having the same conversation. conversation? I think it's really important. If you are listening to the conversation, you would know that you know, Bosa is loaded. Mm -hmm. We're discussing the topic, can women change how politics is played? And Bosa um, Abosade Jojogan is here with us. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-4663. You can also tweet at us at Weishu Africa one with hashtag Weishu. Let me leave the floor to the ladies to ask the question. Because you know me, I always have plenty of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Chinelo, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, so I know first and foremost, right, um, and it's a matter of equity and then human rights, which we all know are cornerstones of a democratic society. But at the same time, do we, so we've had, so when I saw this topic today, I fortunately I was sitting with a man mm. and I brought this up <laughs> with him. And you know the next thing he said to me, he said, you please <laughs> don't tell me that. So I'm like, oh. he said, didn't we have, I don't mm -hmm. know if I should call her name, but then didn't we have that minister that was a mm. woman that stole money? Didn't we have, and I'm like, Really? Is that is that is that your basis right now? Is that what you're is that what you're driving at? Why aren't you looking at it from a place of where we are that we've actually had women let me not in Nigeria now. Outside of Nigeria we've had women in parliaments who have actually made, you know, very visible difference. For example, look at Sally Johnson. <laughs> who are the people stealing all the money now? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, because every time this conversation comes up, mm. they bring up Desiani. Yes. Do you understand? It doesn't make any sense. They have a million and one Desiani in wearing a bada and, and, ah. and suit. <laughs> so, so I think the point is, and I think that's a really good point. The point is, when people raise that argument, mm. they forget that predominantly mm -hmm. it is men mm -hmm. that have been yeah. in, in positions of power. So it's really nice, you know, to raise that one, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but as we just established, it's not so much that women are better right. leaders, mm. Mm. but we are losing significantly from not having them. And unfortunately, for that argument as well, mm. we've just not had enough women to establish that all no women steal, that exactly. right? Yeah. So I, 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 I empathize with mm. people who want to throw in that argument, but it's just not um, founded um, enough. Yeah, okay, so do you think that if we had more government action, you know, towards the pers increasing the participation of women in politics, that would help? Absolutely. I think that's a very important point. So, again, the evidence shows us that across the world where women's political representation has been increased, right, and this is not only you know, other climes. It's Africa as well. It happened in Senegal recently, mm -hmm. Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. there, it is as a result of a legislated gender quota. So mm -hmm. to your point, the national gender policy exists. Yeah. It makes provisions for affirmative action. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it hasn't translated mm -hmm. because it is not legislated. Mm -hmm. So as you know, last year, we were pushing for five gender bills mm -hmm. to be part of the constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. But of course, the Ninth Assembly threw those out, mm -hmm. right? Because that would have made provision for additional seats for women. women. Mm -hmm. And why is this important? Because it would surprise you to know that when people, you know, previously bills have been taken to the assembly. Mm -hmm. And guess what the men ask? Whose seats do you want them to take? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why the proposal was now additional seats, where only women could run, could fill, could fill those, those seats. Yes. So it would be we multiple would political parties. Mm -hmm. yes. It would be multiple political parties, but it would all be women mm -hmm. running for those seats. Mm -hmm. But women would still be able to 
vie for, for all those sets. other mm -hmm. seats that yeah. men occupy. Mm -hmm. But that way, it was a way to at least get in. And he had a sunset clause of 16 years, after which we would, you know, we would well, retire mm -hmm. that, yes. um, that legislation because hopefully it is no longer needed. needed. Mm -hmm. But to deny that there are barriers... And, you know, there's no need to, to go over it. But violence is one of them. True. Funding is another. Mm -hmm. um, but the democratic process mm -hmm. is getting better. Mm -hmm. The new Electoral Act does present promises. And so, you know, I really believe that if we start to do the things now, that we need against to the next do four years. against the next four years, we will see an increase in those numbers. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to get that legislation... I think it would be accelerated even Absolutely. more. Fantastic. Absolutely. No, man, let me come to you. <coughs> Sorry. Hi, Bosse. Thank you so much. In fact, Chinelo and Jola literally took the questions out of my mouth because those are the questions that were burning already um, um, at the top of my mind. But I would like to ask, uh, how do women deal with sudden uh, setbacks like um, say, for example, in the media space yeah. or in gender-related electoral violence, mm. you know, where they have to be confronted with real issues like this, having to stand in the face of opposition, having to receive death threats mm. and um, take speeches against them because of their, their gender. Mm. And uh, the perception, the general perception that this is a traditional right for men. How do they deal with situations like that? That's, that's my first question. And the second is, how can we begin to get more and more women to get on board with enlightenment and some, come, uh, some kind of um, movement that empowers women to begin to bring their value to the table, like really deliberately and intentionally doing this? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think those are two brilliant questions, by the way. And I think for the first one, now, you reeled out the barriers. Honestly, those are the barriers, okay? Now, you know, role modeling is very powerful. Mm. The more women see women in positions of leadership, the more they would believe that they can get there. So with all the barriers that you have just outlined, at least, thank God, a few women have made it past the finish line, right? Not enough, obviously, not the numbers that we're looking for, but the most important thing is there is the notion that, look, if she could do it, then regardless of all those barriers, I also can overcome those barriers and actually do it. So I think that the first part is we, that's what, and actually that is why we need to get more women in positions of power because those little girls coming up need to know that it's not reserved for men because like you said, it almost seems like it's the right and the preserve of men, right? They call it a boys club for, for, to be in those positions. But imagine if really soon in a few years, we have a female president. It, all, it automatically removes a barrier in a girl's life, yes. and in a girl's yes. mind. Yes. So, and that's the power of role modeling. So when you say, how can we overcome? Role modeling is a huge piece. I personally think another big piece, and these are all areas that my organization, Willen, is working on, is equipping young women. Hmm. Because you see, some oh. of us, I agree that, you know, we're not that old. There's still hope for us. <laughs> but you see, eh, we were socialized in that way. Yeah. So by default, we are also corporates, mm. you know, to this thing. Let's be honest, right? And I always ask the question that, look, this is a social construct that we constructed like a building. We all need to deconstruct it together, mm. okay? And it starts with, I personally believe, really how we're raising our young women and how we're raising raising our young men. Because to your point earlier, male allyship is a very important part of this yeah. conversation. But in 
imagine if we started to show the young boys that actually this is something that you can collaborate on versus having a whole generation who have grown up thinking, no, this play, this is not, no, I cannot it's, it's right, do this side yeah. by side yeah. a female, right? So I think those two things are definitely things that we must, must start to work on, especially ahead of the next four years. I think the other question was about... Norma? Yeah, the other question was about uh, how we can get more women to bring them. Yes, to yes. Table. So, so you know, one of the things people say a lot is, oh, women don't support women. That's why you people, the thing has not increased. I agree with you. We need women to understand the value chain of politics. That's what I always say. You know, because not everybody will run. Mm -hmm. True. You are not, not everybody's the candidate, mm. right? But there's a whole value oh. chain. You can help to fundraise. You can give women a platform, right? Yeah. You can give them visibility. You can consult for them. You can do strategy. You can volunteer for them. You can literally help, the, you know, whatever, even what you offer. If you're a makeup artist, every time you want to go out, I will do your makeup. Mm. You know, so women need to understand the value chain of politics. And then I cannot leave this conversation without talking about the political parties mm -hmm. because actually that is where a lot of this stuff really happens. And so women understanding that they can play an impactful and strategic role in the political parties is very important. And so let me highlight something that, because now I've remembered your question very well. You see, I always argue that the grassroots women are politically aware. Mm. It is actually the elite women that are, not. That are mm. not as politically aware. I would love to see a collaboration between the two where you bring your exposure, your expertise, your resources, and that woman who's at that local level, who attends all the ward meetings, mm. who understands and knows and what Baba Alaye and everybody, mm. you know, you collaborate and actually build power. I always say that's the question that keeps me awake at night. Why? Because the evidence shows us now we're 49.2% of the population. Mm -hmm. Some argue that we are more as women. Last election, we were 47% of the voters. This election, we are about 49 or 48% of the voters. So that means that women have been voting men. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if we could convert numbers to power. So I also think to your point about how do we get women, they need to understand the value chain, but also there needs to be a collaboration between these grassroots women who understand politics in a very unique way and the elite women who can come with resources, intellect, expertise, and other forms of resources. So I like the idea of women supporting women. And I want to just stay on it for a minute, right? There's a particular woman that is going around right now as r r trying to run for the position of deputy governor in Lagos State. Mm. In terms of clout, give it to her because with everything she's done in terms of her movies, she's gotten the, the, the clout and everything. But I saw women composing songs about her, what's it called? Something, no, you know, get husband and all of mm. that. And, and it just got me wondering. Two things, right? Why do we always, as women, mm. feel the need to pull another woman down? You know, regardless of your own politics, that's number one. Number two, this particular woman, right? If it were a man, there would not be any conversation around her husband mm. or mm -hmm. her spouse or whatever. Partner, you know, yeah. all of a sudden, because she's a woman running, mm. now you're not linking that, oh, they will be having an affair mm. yeah. in the, in the, in the mm. government house. Mm. Like, this very, very shallow kind of thinking, yeah. right? It's more women that fuel it, right? How do we get women to come out of those and see their potential? And do we just elect women because they came out? Or, yes. Should we just say, because, because give it to this person. In terms of clout and everything, she has it. Capacity to govern. I will, boss, I will vote an abortion in George Ogan because I know her personally and I know her capacity for leadership. So should we just say, okay, because women are coming out, because that's the argument a lot mm. of women make, yeah. that eh, you cannot just vote anybody, now you must vote But we've seen very incompetent men. So, so and now, I, we did, now we did vote them. Thank you very much. So you see, I mean, with no apology whatsoever, and I'm happy for anybody to come for me, if there's a woman on the ballot, just vote woman. Thank First. you. 
<laughs> yes. You know why? Because as we, as I already stated, the evidence shows that women lead differently. So mm. let's just spice it up a little bit, right? Mm. Because right now it's really, really badly skewed. 90 something percent versus 96 versus 4 is just not good. Mm. So just vote women. So that's one. The second thing that I want to say based on what you're saying is this. Look, to be honest, there's a lot of ignorance. And I say that because they are transferable skills. Election, political leadership is a job. Mm -hmm. It's a job description. You have to do X, Y, and Z. What are the competencies you need to be a political leader? Let's be honest. You need to be able to manage resources. Yeah. You need to be able to manage stakeholders. You know what I mean? You need to be able to negotiate, communicate. These are, val these are skills, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That actually can be you know, like can be acquired and can be transferred. So if a woman has succeeded in a particular sphere of influence, now I would say that it's part of her, you know, due diligence, like early days preparation to understand what she has and then understand if there are any gaps. But you see the thing, the challenge is women always are judged on performance while men are judged on potential. Mm. This is the problem, right? Because at the end of the day, if a man has 40% of the job's description, he's going. Yeah. If a woman has 95, she'll say, ah, I don't have five. Oh, let me not apply. Mm. So I really think, and that's why I say it's a lot of ignorance. We need to, first of all, the women themselves need to understand, I bring something to the table. Even if you've managed a home, mm. That is experience. True. That is job experience. Re yes, I admit that you might need to close some gaps, but the point I'm also making is that, see, in Nigeria, to run for office, all you need is SSC. Mm -hmm. it, it is based on constitutional um, requirements. A lot of women, I mean, look, at, I, I looked at the Anambra elections. A lot of the governors were men. We had, of, obviously, Uche Ekwenifi as a woman. But a lot of the governors were men. Some had uh, SSC, some had BSC. Was all their deputies PhD, mm -hmm. which is always and the they're case. all women. <laughs> oh, they were mostly women, <laughs> which is always the case that women feel they need to overcompensate. Mm. You know, so like I said, I think we really need to deal with the ignorance of, and it's it's disheartening to hear that women are the ones bringing women down. Mm. Look, until we have solidarity amongst our gender, mm. we will not change this thing. If you think about the not too young to run movement, where young people came together and say, reduce this age, we you want to voice. run at 25. Yes. Yeah. Le remove it from 30, remove it from 40. Mm. We need a movement like that. For women. And we need to come together to be able, we need solidarity. See, you are, you are tall, you are short, you are, I don't like you. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to like the person. Mm. Just support the person because, like I said, on the other side of that is our entire well-being, improved livelihood, sustainable development. So be selfish mm. and actually support women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chinelo, take a comment. You know, <laughs> it's so interesting. <laughs> and I love the fact that you said about the, the value chain, right? Because that value chain is very important. Like yes. me, I was talking to Milola yesterday. I mean, she wanted to run for office. I did my part. And I handed over to somebody that, was, that could take on from where... I could, I didn't have the capacity to, but I knew my role. Mm. Do you understand? So as a, as a woman, know your role, know your position, know where you fit in. So you don't have to be the one. If you're not the founder, you're not the founder. There are people that are anywhere you go, I follow you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Support the person. Whatever skill, whatever um, capacity that you can bring to the table, bring it. And let me throw a challenge out to women. We have at the moment, I think, four or three commercial bank MDs. I think we need to start leveraging those positions. Mm. You know what I mean? Men do it. True. You see, and that's why I said that conversation about building power, we need to understand it. Bring what you have. Let's put it on the Let's table. You know, it's like family meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to grow, Abby? Eh, what do we need? Mm, mm, mm. What, what, oh yeah, Chinelo, what are you going to bring? Oh yeah, put it there. And before you know it, we will get in there. But until we do that, strategy, we have I mean, to be very can strategic. Do bridal showers and My darling sister. <laughs> I know, as in, in seconds. Actually, that's a happen. really good model. Yes. Yes. Where everybody brings yes. everything yes. and then we just rally around yes. the bride, right? Mm. And actually get her to the point where she's like, oh my God. Da, da, da. You, you <laughs> as far as the candidate is competent, they have character. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we are just over. What's I'm behind you? Don't worry. Anytime you are ready. <laughs> Let's take comments. I don't even 
asking my dear beautiful sisters of what I say in hashtag ways. Can women change how politics is played? The answer is yes. Nobody should get me wrong or misunderstand me. I'm not against men because I'm a man. But if you look at it critically, men that have been in power all these years have failed us and we haven't moved forward. That is the plain truth and nothing more. Nigeria has failed to try what Nigeria failed to try what will eventually work, and that is to try to put a woman in power. Hmm. Trust me, if a woman is in power, our great country and nation, Nigeria, will change and Absolutely. move forward. My name is Daniel Ilowe, Israel Bilafan. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one says, I believe women have more sense of shame yes, than so. men. <laughs> this will make them deliver better in politics. Thank you for this comment. Absolutely. Is this shame that will not let us to hear words? <laughs> Don't disgrace your family. No, I have a comment. All right, uh, I have this one. There's no name to it, but it says the lady is saying something great, but I don't agree with the area where she said just vote for her. I believe we need to check if the candidate has what it takes to run. Have you checked your men? We check your men. Oh God, we leave it there. <laughs> she but has what to run. As far as she has a B, um, a, a, she has SSC. SSC. That's, <laughs> That's what we will you That's mean, you need. Constitutional requirement. Let me tell you, we need more men to support this movement. Yeah. I can tell you for free. Yes. If some of us become leaders, you will just be bowling. Yeah. You will not suffer again. <laughs> but thank you so but, much. But can I just say one Quickly, point? One the minute. businessmen know this. So that's why they put women thank in leadership yeah. positions. Because yeah. their bottom line mm -hmm. is... And the numbers are speaking. Reporting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we had an amazing conversation. Thank you, Boston. Always course, a pleasure. Of course. Thank Always, you for please, me. we'll keep on bringing you back. <laughs> no, because me, I have a four-year agenda. <laughs> From now, let's start positioning yes, women sure. for Very the important. next four years. Very thank important. you, Norma. Thank you, Chinelo. And thank you, Diola. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote today, here it is again. There's need to be a, fun, or rather, there needs to be a fundamental shift in the way societies view women in government. One that does not see them as mere seat fillers or stats on a chat. They must be viewed as a vital contribution or contributing factor to the betterment of the world. When you begin to see the potential of every woman, trust me, Nigeria will be different. Mm. Africa will be different. Mm. The world will be different. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as I bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>